this. This is how I live my life in prison, guys. You don't understand. You don't understand some of the obstacles that I faced in prison. There is a hatred among men when they find out. Oh, uh, well, like like me, I kept myself sequestered. There were there were times where racial things exploded in prison, and I had to participate. I am a product of my environment. I, I live there. I have to follow prison protocols and, and politics. And there's when things aren't going along, I used to I isolate myself. I used to ostracize myself. I would be deep off in my studies in my books. And some people did not like that. It wasn't just racial. Some some people just thought, well, he thinks he's better than us, or he thinks he's going to actually be somebody. He thinks he's going to do something with all that. And they didn't understand why I didn't participate in their games and their gambling and their sporting events. They didn't understand why I sat, you know, on a bench in the day room all day long and just read books and made notes. And then on the weekends, every book I read during a week, I would take it into my cell on a weekend and I, they would not see me all day Saturday. Because all day Saturday, I wouldn't go to the chow halls. I wouldn't go to rec. I wouldn't go anywhere. I used to live on a rec yard. I used to, stay, I used to say so dark, but uh, I didn't do anything. I used, I used to be a prolific runner. Running was my thing. I like to do it. So uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't participate in prison culture other than conversations in library. And I love the game chess and, and yeah, uh, chess, chess is something I got pretty damn good at, but of course I would, uh, play it, play hundreds of hundred, enough games. You're going to get good of any, anything. So in prison, I would read these books on the weekends. I would take every book that I had read during the week on Saturday. I would stack them up. I'd get my old metal prison typewriter out, put a piece of paper in there and I would write the title of the book, the author, the date of publication and who published it. And that goes at the top of every page. Then I would go through the book page by page and everywhere I'd made, I made pencil notations. I wrote the page number and exactly what that data said on you know, right there, word for word, put it in quotations, go to the next one. Once I filled up an entire page, it went into a folder, went into a folder went into a folder. Every single page documented the source of the data that was contained on that page. Once I had thousands of pages, I would organize and I would spend about a month and I would just organize everything chronologically. Everything's chronological. Once it was done chronologically, I'd get a visit every six months, six or seven months at a visit. I would give it to my family. It'd be a huge bag. I'd give it to my family. My first 14 months out of prison, I lived I lived at home on house arrest with a monitor on my leg. I was able to leave twice a week to go shopping and, and go to parole, but I didn't care because I had access to a home office. And in that home office, I was just going through all my debt. I was overwhelmed. I had so many bags full of debt. I didn't know where to start. It took me over a year just to process that I had all this information and I started Nephilim Archives. And the only person listening to me right now that knows what I was going through back then is Stephen Walsworth. He used to see all the time when I was uploading stuff to, to Nephilim Archives. But I had to change the name because my whole direction was shifting because Nephilim Studies is so small to what I really do. And that's when I came up with Archaics. Thank you.